Hello, my name is David Hicks. Thank you for tuning in to this little video. It's an addendum to the last lesson I did, uh, Formulas for Success, How to Build a Great Relationship with God. There are just a few thoughts I wanted to add to this. Um, in case you did not see the last video, the drawing you see before you is kind of my own little formula for success, my recipe, if you will, for how to have a great relationship with God. And it starts on, on the foundation with humility, but not thinking yourself better than others. I, I don't believe I read this in my last video, so I might as well read it now. The reason I put humility at the bottom, humility as the foundation, if you will, um, comes from, from two verses. Luke chapter 18, verse 9 through 14 is a parable Jesus told. And it goes like this. To some who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. So he's aiming at those who are confident in their own righteousness and look down on others. Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisees were the, uh, how should I say, strictest religious sect of the Jews in Jesus' day. According to uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, his own testimony, he used to be a Pharisee. And he called them the strictest sect of the Jews. So they, they were very religiously strict. The tax collectors were notorious for stealing from other people, okay, uh, for abusing their governmental authority. And that's a warning to all of you in politics, okay? Uh, don't abuse the authority given to you by God. Uh, I know it feels like, it, you know, it's just the way our government's designed. What do you mean it's given to me by God? Well... When Jesus was uh, before Pilate, and Pilate said, don't you know I have the power to crucify you? And Jesus told him, well, you wouldn't have that power at all if it hadn't been given to you from above. So when you're in a position of government, the authority you have, the power you have, is really ultimately from God. What are you going to do with that power and with that authority? Key here is don't abuse it. The tax collectors were abusing it and forcing people to get more money than what they were supposed to. So, extremely strict religious guy, uh, notorious thief, legalized thief. This is what we're comparing. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like all other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This is a, a consistent theme throughout all of Scripture. Uh, God resists the proud gives grace to the humble. Those who exalt themselves, they will be humble. The, humbles, the humble people will be exalted. And so if you want your prayers heard by God, approach Him in a spirit of humility. Approach Him in a spirit of humility. You approach Him in a spirit of pride, and braggadocious, talking about how, how, how much greater you are than other people. God's not going to listen to your prayer. So, humility, foundational in prayer. Humility uh, is foundational to, to feeding yourself on God's Word, to understanding God's Word. Because it, it takes an approach in which, you know, you're saying, I need to learn. I don't, uh, there are things I don't understand. There are things I, 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 I have wrong, I believe wrong. I, and God, I need you to correct me. I need you to teach me. And, and that's what God does for the humble. In the 25th Psalm, uh, verse 9, which, you know, hey, to start this video, to my own credit, I had marked. And then I went to Luke and I lost my place. All right, Psalm 25, verse 9. He that is the Lord guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. So when you're humble before God, He will guide you into what is right. He will teach you His way. 
And so humility is foundational in prayer. It's foundational to learning about God, learning about Jesus, learning their ways, and understanding them. So in my little formula for success here, start with humility. Be humble in, in your own eyes. Uh, don't be greater than others in your own eyes. Let me put it that way. <laughs> um, and then it takes regular prayer. It takes regularly feeding yourself on God's Word. And, and I think of it this way. In any great relationship, there has to be two-way communication. And in prayer, we communicate to God. Uh, there's other ways to do it. I mean, singing, you know, we're often singing to the Lord and communicating to Him via, via those ways. You can communicate to Him through writing. There are a lot of ways to communicate to God. And there are a lot of ways that God communicates to us, not just through His uh, reading His Word, okay, um, through the testimony and witness of others, the words of others, through, um, you know, other, uh, other things that people have written, drawn, sang, done uh, you, that are spiritually helpful that will help you grow closer to God um, and, and just if you pay attention to your God voice okay the, the God voice to me it's more than just your conscience your sit, sense of right and wrong um, it's those promptings within you to do what's right it's those words of wisdom comfort, goodness and righteousness, that th things that you know Satan would never say. Satan would never tell you. That's the voice you want to listen to in your head. So there's lots of ways that God communicates to us. All that said, and there's lots of ways we communicate to God. Primarily, though, it comes down to prayer and, and, and being in the Word. Uh, feeding yourself on God's Word. And so from there, it's just putting it into practice. Taking what you learn and trying to apply it to your life. Apply, apply, apply. Especially love. Loving God, loving others, caring about God, caring about others. Um, you know, uh, the reason I, I like to throw the word care in there is because care involves emotion. Uh, and you're saying, well, God, uh, David doesn't love him. Isn't that the ultimate emotion? It is... But sometimes, you know, there's there's this thing where, you know, God tells us to love one another. And and, to, to, and, and so we, we tell ourselves, okay, I want to love everyone. But in so doing, for me, this is, this is just maybe, maybe it's just a David Hicks thing. Saying I want to love everyone doesn't carry the emotional power and saying that I'm going to love everyone doesn't carry the emotional power and weight that saying I'm going to care about everyone does so at least in this context to me care is a, a, is a better word for it um, but yes bottom line is put it into practice the things you learn especially love now the thing I really wanted to add that I didn't talk about last week is, is, these are like um, these three are here like Jenga blocks. If you ever played Jenga, you know, you're, you're building, you're taking these blocks and you, you have this little tower and if you pull out one, you're in, you're in danger of causing the whole tower to fall. Well, obviously, if you pull out humility from your life, it's all falling down. You pull out prayer, you, you're in danger, okay? This thing's going to start to to, to tilt maybe and eventually fall over your relationship God, with God is going to get weaker when you cease talking to him you pull out feeling on God's word and even humility uh, is in danger because being in God's word regularly reminds you to be humility these kind of feed on one another are foundational to one another, but you can only draw it one way. Um, but yes, that, when Moses told uh, the Israelites, when you ever, when you get to the point, you're going to want a king like everybody else. That king is supposed to write a copy of this law and and, and read it every day of his life. And, and one of the things that reading God's law every day of his life would help him do was to help him not think himself to be 
better or greater than his brothers and sisters. I mean, you're the king. Who else is more tempted to be prideful than a king? But by staying in God's word, he'd stay humble. So if you if you pull out any of these, it's 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 going to fall apart. And if you're not putting it into practice, well, what's the point of doing all this? Now, hopefully, all of this will lead to putting it into practice. Okay. But just all I have to say, think of these like jingle blocks. You know, you don't want any of these to uh, be out of your life. Last thing I'll say about this is that, of course, Satan understands these principles. So Satan will attack all of them, all of these blocks, okay? One way or another. Um, whenever you have success in following God, that's when he hits you with the pride, the pride temptation. Um, he knows keeping you from prayer is a good thing to stop you from praying. Um, if so, so he'll come up with excuses as to why you should pray. He'll keep you busy. He'll keep you tired. He'll keep you preoccupied. He'll, he'll do whatever he needs to do to try and convince you not to pray. He'll tell you God's not listening to your prayers. Now, are there certain, certain circumstances in which God doesn't listen? Yeah, there is. Um, <laughs> when we approach him in pride, we talked about that. Um, Psalms talks about, you know, if we cherish sin in our hearts, when we love sin and value sin in our hearts, God's not going to listen to our prayers. So, um, but yes, Satan's going to attack humility. He's going to attack prayer. And he's going to, you know, same thing with feeding yourself on God's word. He knows that's bad. Because when you stay in God's word, it's going to remind you to pray. It's going to remind you to be humble. It's going to remind you to put things into practice. Okay, you could put feet on God's word in this little form of success on the bottom. There's no, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's this is just a little my version of it. Okay, it's not set in stone. There, if, if you know, there are different ways to think of this. Uh, having a formula for success, having a, a way to have a great relationship with God. It's not the only recipe. Okay, but He's going to tempt you to again to stay busy. Um, to discourage you, just um, to say it's too hard to understand, um, it's too hard to apply, it's uh, mainly, you know, keep you distracted to where you don't even think about it. You know, keep your mind so busy and so preoccupied with other things that you don't think to pray, you don't think to feed yourself with God's Word. And of course, He's especially going to try and stop you from putting it into practice. Whatever, you know, whatever whatever we're talking about, whether it's giving or having mercy, forgiving others, um, being kind, being good, being patient, persevering, um, showing love, etc. I mean, of course, he's going to try and stop us from putting it into practice. But when we have these three as foundations, it's very, very difficult for him to stop us uh, from obeying. Okay, so those are just some uh, last thoughts I wanted to throw out there. Hope that's helpful. Whatever you do, um, yeah, I encourage you to ask yourself, okay, how am I going to approach my life? How am I going to approach my relationship with God? What am I going to? What What in my heart do I really want to do? Um, in our last video, we talked about Daniel. He set his heart to to understand and to humble himself before God. And Anna, the prophetess, she she concentrated on worship, prayer, fasting, and, and proclaiming, telling others about Jesus. Ezra had set his heart to to study the law of the Lord, you know, and, and practice it, teach it, study it, practice it, teach it. Jesus talked about how he just, he always did what pleased God. That was his first life. I'm going to always do what, pre, I'm gonna always do what pleases my Father. And, and so there are simple ways to look at life and, and have a great relationship with God. Uh, just 
but think it through and ask yourself, you know, how, how, how do I view my relationship with God? How do I want to go about building a, a great relationship with the Lord? So, all right. I hope that's uh, been a helpful addendum. And uh, God bless. Thank you for listening.